Good afternoon, folks. I'm Josh Clawson inside the CTV Weather Headquarters with your first forecast. Beautiful day today, but we do have severe thunderstorm watches in effect for many areas around the province, including the city. We'll detail that in a few moments as things look like they're set to get stormy here tonight into tomorrow morning. And cooler temperatures on the way for the weekend as well. Details on all of that in a moment. CTV News starts right now. Tonight, could Edmonton's new arena end up in Enoch? Quite frankly, I'm a little bit surprised here. The Cates Group says it's open to alternatives in the Edmonton region. Another wild day on the markets. When will the roller coaster end? Markets, I think, are, are hesitant. They don't know whether this is going to be the beginning of a trend and whether markets might indeed continue to fall. A new fixture is coming to White Avenue. It's probably helpful. It's certainly not very decorative. Permanent public toilets could be in place as early as the fall. Also, she was held captive in Somalia for over a year. Why Amanda Lindhout can't wait to return to the area. You look at the little kids here. <laughs> and that's the, that's the whole reason. And... <laughs> A royal connection. Sounds like a dream is just someone pinch me and wake me up. We'll tell you why a slave lake woman is corresponding with Prince William and Kate. Live from Edmonton, CTV News with Carrie Dahl. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news. Police are on the lookout for a young woman who they say has HIV and is having unprotected sex. They say 17-year-old Kira Peterson is not disclosing her condition and they're hoping for the public's help in finding her. Des Malenka is following this developing story, joining us live tonight from police headquarters with more. Des? Kerry, please tell me it's very unusual to release a youth's name and picture, but they did get permission from the court this morning to do so because they believe this is a risk to the entire community. EPS sexual assault detectives are looking for 17-year-old Kira Peterson. She is allegedly having unprotected sex with a number of partners without telling them she is HIV positive. Police say so far, two people have come forward alleging they've been with Peterson in the last month. We also want to make sure that this offense doesn't continue because it is a criminal offense, but it's also something that we need, she needs help and we want to help the people that she's been with as well. Please tell us this afternoon, this does affect the entire community and strongly recommend anyone who has had sexual activity with the 17 year old to get medical attention as soon as possible. Now, anyone with information in regards to Peterson's whereabouts or where she may have been is asked to call Crime Stoppers immediately. Carrie? Okay, Des, you mentioned that the police had to get permission to release her photo. So give us some perspective. How unusual is this? Well, the sexual assault detectives that I spoke with do tell me this is the first time that they've ever gone to court to ask for permission to release a youth's name and picture. Now, this is a criminal offense to have HIV and not tell your partner. So they are alleging that this, this could definitely be a criminal offense. You could face aggravated sexual assault charges for something like this. So again, anyone who knows where um, Peterson may be is asked to call Crime Stoppers immediately. Des Malenka with that live report from police headquarters. Thank you, Des. We also have some breaking news from Kingsway Mall tonight. CTV News just took a call from an eyewitness who says a car drove through the doors leading to the food court in the mall. We've just received this picture. Edmonton Fire Rescue and police are on scene right now. Not known at this time whether or not anyone was hurt. The witness claims a woman behind the wheel of the car drove through the parking lot over a tree and into the front of the building. Stay with CTV News throughout the hour for updates on this story. Well, some city motorists will need to find a new route in West Edmonton. Here now is a live shot to the White Mud looking eastbound. As you can see, the White Mud exit northbound onto the Henday. It is closed until October because of road construction. Motorists can detour using 170th or 178th Street. Some drivers are also heading into Lewis Estates to get around the detour and then as far west as Highway 60. And this was the scene earlier in the day, moments after the city put barricades up, blocking off the white mud exits. This is the latest closure that has left some drivers very frustrated. I was coming into town, that was just crazy, and they they had uh, they didn't have any good direction. I even went off into the wrong way, like they got they don't even have any signs or anything. It's it's terrible. They're just shutting everything off. We leave work. It takes us almost 45 minutes to get home when it's only 20 blocks that way. Uh, 
Yeah, that's about it, basically. It just drives me nuts. And after a few delays because of wet weather, motorists will finally be able to use the new Lassard Road interchange. The new stretch of road will be open to traffic tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. The city hopes to have the Collingwood interchange finished in a couple of months. Well, a new twist tonight in the battle for a new home for the Oilers. While the Cates group is still in negotiations for a downtown rink, the group admits it's open to other options. Simon Osler is following these developments and joins us with the details. Simon? Well, Carrie, one city councillor says that she was, uh, says negotiations were going well and that she is blindsided by the Cates group's latest move. In a written statement, the Case Group says we continue to believe that the best solution for the city and the Oilers is a downtown development, and we remain committed to those negotiations. However, to the extent that we cannot be certain of the result of those negotiations, we are open to alternatives to find another long-term home for the Oilers in the Edmonton region. From reading this statement, it does appear as if it's saying, you know, we're looking at other locations. And, and that is disturbing. The statement has caught City Councillor Kim Crushell off guard. Quite frankly, I'm a little bit surprised here because, I mean, as far as Council's concerned, we do have a deal and we're honouring our commitment to that deal. The comments come after speculation that if an arena deal couldn't be reached with the city, the Cates Group would look to the Enoch Cree Nation for a possible alternative location. However, hockey fans we spoke to say they think the focus should remain on getting a downtown rink done. Probably if I had the choice, I'd choose to have it downtown. You know, revitalize the core a bit. It's, you know, you go down there on the weekend, it's, it's pretty slow, there's not a lot going on. Well, I'd love to be downtown, but if they can, just as long as we get an arena and the guys have a new place, I think that's the most important thing. And what we've been talking about is that we're short $100 million, and I think we've all heard about the discussion in regards to MSI. Now, no one from the Enoch Cree Nation was available to uh, speak to us uh, today. Okay, Simon, so, mean, I understand the Cates Group has also been contacting MLAs regarding the downtown arena. Yes, uh, the Cates Group confirms that they have uh, contacted a few MLAs. Just simply, they say, to ask if they have any questions about the downtown project and how to get in touch with them. Karen? Okay, thank you, Simon. You're welcome. Worries about debt problems in Europe sent global markets falling again today, including right here in Canada. The Toronto Stock Exchange dropped more than 200 points today. That's after losing 500 yesterday. Stock exchanges in Europe and Asia were also down. The Dow managed to squeak out slightly up today. Those market losses were a surprise since there were slight gains on the job front. Alberta's unemployment rate for July dropped 0.1% to 5.5%. The construction industry leading that growth with 7,100 new jobs. Edmonton's unemployment is also down slightly to 5.3 percent. That is the third lowest rate in our country. Across Canada, the rate also stays about the same at 7.2 percent. Economists say it's likely because fewer people were looking for work. White Avenue is a step closer to having permanent outdoor washrooms. Today, the city released sketches on what will stand on the northeast corner of Gateway Boulevard. Jessica Earle joins us now with the details. Jessica? Gary, pretty soon these urinals and porta potties will be swapped out for a more permanent building. The washrooms will be open 24 7 year round. Those behind the move saying this is a long time coming. Here's a look at what's planned. The facility will include three stalls for women, three stalls for men, a change area and two outdoor urinals. The design works to maximize visibility. It'll be a community amenity that's available all the time. There's a great deal of glass. There's no enclosed spaces so people can come and go. Um, and and it'll be as we've worked very hard to make it as safe as possible. Temporary urinals were first set up along White Avenue four years ago. The old Strathcona Business Association hoping to make the area cleaner and friendlier. It was becoming uh, the urinating in back alleys and doorways and whatever else. So I think if people have an alternative that's an obvious and, and clean and safe, attractive alternative, that, uh, and that they will use it. The new washrooms are expected to cost half a million dollars. City officials say the popular strip often sees 20 to 30,000 people during the night, arguing the expense is worth it. Only some out on the streets today agree. It's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> be a place where like dangerous stuff happens. I don't really think it's necessary. Yeah, either. I think it's a really good idea. I live in the neighborhood, so it's really important to me. It's probably helpful. It's cer uh, certainly not very decorative. It's just, you know, rather than making a mess in the public area, you've got a washroom to use. 
Right now, the city is looking to find a builder. We're told once that happens, construction should be finished in about two months. Reporting from White Avenue at 103rd Street, Jessica Earl, CTV News. We should know early next week just how the city and police plan to reduce crime. It will include how to tackle the violence on Edmonton streets that's led to 33 homicides this year. Bill Fortier reports. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's been a hot topic of discussion on White Ave and citywide, but not a happy one. Edmonton's 2011 homicide rate. I don't know, I still find it pretty safe. I've never had any problems, so... I just feel like you're a little more scared like when you go out, like late at night and stuff. The most recent homicide victim was sleeping on a downtown park bench when he was fatally stabbed. It brings Edmonton's total to 33, well above Calgary's three and even higher than Canada's largest city. That's kind of ridiculous to be like that much more. There needs to be and there will obviously on Monday be some kind of uh, response from the police service. That response will come in the form of a violence reduction strategy. The mayor will meet with the police chief, then details are expected. I await with interest. Some Edmontonians hope the plan addresses troubled spots and troubled times. Possibly more cops out on the later hours of the night, from say midnight to four. People feel more safe when there's more like cops on the street, more patrolling and stuff in the areas. You do need to be reactive, but you need to be proactive also. Councillor Brian Anderson cautions next week's plan won't be a magic solution, but he does hope to see a long-term plan that can work. If you want to try to change society's approach to things, it probably takes 12 years. For some, anything to bring down the homicide rate is a good plan. I don't think it's the dangerous for the average person, but I think you could, I mean, it should be reduced. Well, Bill Fortier, CTV News. It's been three years since a local freelance journalist was kidnapped in Somalia. Amanda Lindout spent 15 months pleading to be released and come home to Alberta. But now she's gone back. Kim Taylor is following this story and joins us from the newsroom with more. Kim? Carrie, Amanda Lindout has returned to the country that's full of horrible memories for her. She was kidnapped in August of 2008 in Mogadishu along with Australian photographer Nigel Brennan. She's there to help a country she once longed to escape. The 30-year-old who was originally from Sylvan Lake returned to Somalia with a food convoy. The last time we heard from Lindout in Somalia, she had just been freed in November of 2009. Hours after being released, she told CTV that she had pretty dark moments in the custody of her kidnapper who she said were criminals posing as freedom fighters. It was about as bad as you can imagine. I was kidnapped by a handful of teenage boys. So you can only begin to imagine, you know, the types of abuse that I endured. Two years later, I'm back in Somalia. Lindout and her team unloaded enough food for about 14,000 people, rice, sugar, flour and oil. She's determined to help the people of Somalia and erase the bad memories. The last time that I was here it was not so good, but at the moment I'm feeling better. You know, there's a lot of security around and you look at the little kids here. <laughs> and that's the, that's the whole reason. An organization Lindout helped develop called Global Enrichment Foundation is behind this food convoy and they're currently planning another convoy to Somalia. Information can be found on our website, ctvedmonton.ca. Reporting live, Kim Taylor, CTV News. Thank you, Kim. Edmonton Somali Community Meantime has been collecting donations for their relief effort in their homeland. The more we care, the more we can change. It's a group of people. We're all human at the end of the day. We shouldn't care about tribal warfare. or Because at the end of the day, our brothers are starving. We need to do the best we can to help them. It's the month of giving. It's the month of feeling with the others. It's the month of Ramadan. And uh, everybody, like, uh, hopefully, like, uh, they're going to come together. You can learn more about the Somali Youth Drought Relief Campaign in Edmonton by going to our website and clicking on news links. Charges against a Mexican resort where an Ardrossan woman was killed last year have been dropped. An explosion at the Grand Riviera Princess in Playa del Carmen took the life of 51-year-old Darlene Ferguson and four other Canadians. Original charges laid included homicide after it was alleged that a gas line that caused the blast was not properly reported, installed or maintained. The Mexican judge dropped the charges due to a lack of evidence. However, the hotel may still face a civil suit. 
A month after spending a few hours in Slave Lake, the royal couple, William and Kate, continue to bring hope and joy to the devastated town. A young woman born and raised in Slave Lake has received a very special honor from the Duke and Duchess. Shauna Maddow reports. They waited for hours in the hot sun. Crowded in tight, hoping for a brief moment with royalty. Over the barricade one month ago, William and Kate were given bouquets of flowers, t-shirts, and this. This is uh, 13th Street Southeast. A video documenting the destruction in Slave Lake, produced by a young woman who has been directly impacted by the wildfire that tore through much of the town. And I can't believe that happened to my hometown because I lived there my whole entire life, so it's just hard to see it. While Will and Kate walked the streets and met with the people who lost homes, Kara Sinclair wanted to make sure the power couple shared the story of Slave Lake wherever they went. <laughs> On this day, Sinclair was unable to reach the front of the crowd to hand deliver her DVD so she had a well-connected friend pass forward a copy, and earlier this week, confirmation her video made it. it sounds like a dream, it's just someone pinch me and wake me up. Sinclair was mailed a letter from the Royals, her name and that of a Royal staffer, handwritten in ink. So far what I heard, I'm the only one who actually got a letter back from them. Sinclair says it reaffirms her belief that the Royals meant it when they visited her small northern town and said that they cared. Sean Amato, CTV News, Edmonton. Sinclair is selling copies of her DVD for $15 with all the proceeds going to support the rebuild. For more information on how to get a DVD, you can log on to our website and then click on news links. After a nice warm day, looks like the weather should hold into the evening hours. We still have several hours to go if we're going to see any thunderstorms. 9 p.m. at the earliest and maybe not even until later than that. I'll show you where the thunderstorms are hitting right now. Thank you, Josh. Later tonight, an amazing sight at one of Hawaii's most famous volcanoes. Also, a tiny new addition to the Discovery Wildlife Park near Innisfail. He is son to our dominant female, Sunny, so he's pretty high-ranking in the troop. And up next, we'll tell you why residents of one Alberta community have decided to paint their town pink. you got to be proud to wear pink. I mean, it's for a good cause. This portion of CTV News brought to you by Lotto 649. Next jackpot and estimated 3.5 million. Uncle Ben's RV has been family owned and operated for over 50 years. We're specialists in RVs, boats, campers, and everything in between. We know what you want. We have what you want for the lifestyle you want. Whether it's a new recreational vehicle, a used model, or a rental, we have what you're after at Uncle Ben's. Our friendly staff cares about our customers, and they ensure that your family gets the most out of its newest member. Come into Uncle Ben's today and let our family help yours. See if you can spot the difference between an oil change from Mr. Lou and one done at a dealership. They both use premium brand oil, both use trained technicians, and both work to warranty approved standards. Ready? difference is the car on the right has an appointment two weeks from now at 2.30 in the afternoon. Ready for a change? Pink is exploding throughout a small town just southwest of Edmonton. The community is coming together to add a bit of color that holds some big meaning. Our Des Malenka spent the afternoon in Kalmar and has the details tonight. Des? A solid pink paint is being swept all over Kalmar. I think we just need to get the awareness out and it's really brought our community residents together as one and they're just starting to share stories and really getting to know one another. Inch by inch a powerful pink gleams from Main Street. Nikki Bergsma says the town is preparing to welcome the wild pink yonder ladies. The group rides nearly 700 kilometers over 22 days every year. This year they're moseying into Kalmar. It's pretty emotional at times. I mean, uh, just pulling into town, coming to work every day, it's, it's such a cheerful, great feeling. It's an event businesses down Main Street believe in. Yeah, if they have hearts in the year, that's the year they passed away. Each and every name on this storefront, a friend or relative of Kyla Bell's. 
When I heard about it, I just thought it was a great opportunity to honor them and recognize them and the fight that they they gave. Visitors are noticing the pink and residents are proud. Yeah, you definitely see it when you if you're driving through. For a town this size to get together and do something like that is great. We've always been pretty gutsy as a small town. We're open to any type of suggestion or disrespect, but you, I think you have to be a real man to wear pink as well. I think it's really important that people recognize that cancer can hit anybody at any time, any age, and we just need to bring awareness to people that it is there. Thanks a lot. Desmalenka, CTV News, Kalmar. Wow, beautiful community spirit in Kalmar. The goal there to raise $10,000 to be named the pinkest town in the West. You can learn more about this project by going to our website. Weather time now. If we reflect on the day that was, wow, what a day. Gorgeous. Yeah, 26 degrees for a daytime high here in Edmonton. We're still at 25 downtown right now. Two degrees warmer than normal and no precipitation just yet. That may change as we head into the late evening hours. We do have a severe thunderstorm watch that's in effect for uh, a lot of the province. Peace River, Manning, Fairview areas, Grand Prairie, Hinton Grand Cache, Slave Lake, south into the Edmonton region, all under a severe thunderstorm watch. Red Deer region and then down into the Coronation areas under a watch. And in this orange zone, severe thunderstorm warning for a cluster of cells here that are east of Hannah very quickly moving north of Oyen and heading off to the east. They are producing hail as well as some heavy downpours. You also have some thunderstorms that are rumbling through the foothills. One thunderstorm cell there just to the south of the Rocky Mountain House region. If we zoom in a little closer, you can see some thunderstorms that were producing some very heavy downpours, Swan Hills and south of Slave Lake. And for us here in the Edmonton area, you can see this line that's developed from Edson down to the south, still to the west of Lodgepole. That is the main line that we're watching to come through, as we said, probably no earlier than about 9 9 p.m. for the Edmonton area. Showers and thunderstorms as well rumbling through northwestern Alberta, although they are of the non-severe variety. Had some pretty good thunderstorms, uh, some fairly frequent lightning and some heavy downpours around Grand Prairie earlier this afternoon. Looks like things are slowly starting to settle down in that region. We'll talk a little bit more about our chances for storms tonight into tomorrow here in the Edmonton area and the cooler weather on the way for the weekend later in the newscast. CTV Weather Watch, brought to you by The Horses at Northlands Park. Live thoroughbred racing Wednesday and Friday evenings, weekend afternoons. Okay, here's a good reason to do a dance of joy. Edmonton's mosquito population is tumbling. The city says their trap counts are down by about half this week, and the numbers have steadily declined since mid-July. It looks like our peak was actually about two weeks ago, which is somewhat unusual. And uh, Usually, for most summers, this is actually the week where we see our highest numbers of mosquitoes. At the peak around July 19th, the traps caught about a thousand mosquito larvae. That number is now around 100. Big difference. Coming up on CTV News, sex or your smartphone. A new survey shows how many will pick the phone over their partner. Also still ahead tonight, Jack Tobin apologizes in court as he awaits sentencing on a drunk driving conviction. Apologies to Golden Harvest. Waiting for the dress. Pete, their drummer, didn't show up tonight. So they had to call this guy. Sorry, boys. The Dairy Queen, we don't stop it good enough. We didn't just stop it soft serve. We made the one-of-a-kind blizzard. And we don't just make a cookie one. We make a caramel toffee cookie one. We don't just have heart-shaped balloons. We have heart-shaped balloons tied to sharks. And this isn't just chest hair. This is chest hair that spells out what I say. Because a Dairy Queen, good isn't good enough. The new caramel toffee cookie mini blizzard. Toffee cookie pieces and caramel, just $2.99. So good, it's ridiculous. It's frustrating being kept awake by body pain caused by seized muscles. And believe me, I've tried lots of things to get relief. Heating pads, ice, even massage. Then I discovered new Tylenol Body Pain Night. It's specially formulated with the trusted pain relief of Tylenol and a muscle relaxant to release tense muscles so that you can get to sleep. New Tylenol Body Pain Night. Get back to normal, whatever your normal is.
locked in with the right devices for back to school and be everywhere. Apologies to Doug's bowling team. Doug had to cancel tonight, so they had to recruit this guy. Sorry, fellas. Jack Tobin will have to wait to hear his sentence for the drunk driving death of a good friend. Tobin, the son of former Newfoundland Premier, gave an emotional statement in an Ottawa courtroom today. He said he was ashamed of the unforgivable mistakes that he made. Alex Zolpis, a close friend of his, died on Christmas Eve when he was pinned under a truck that Tobin was driving. Sentencing has been scheduled for the end of the month. Polygamous leader Warren Jeffs could face more than 100 years behind bars after being convicted of sexually assaulting two young girls. Jeffs is the leader of a breakaway Mormon sect. He was found guilty of assaulting his 12-year-old wife and fathering a child with a 15-year-old. A key piece of evidence in the case was an audio recording where he was heard having sex with a 12-year-old. Five police officers in New Orleans were convicted today of wrongfully shooting unarmed civilians after Hurricane Katrina hit. Two of the victims died. 17-year-old James Brissett was killed, and today his mother said justice has been served. It took the twinkle out my eye, the song out of my heart, and blew out my candle. But it's going to be all right, because justice has been served. Court was told the officers shot at six people on a bridge and then tried to cover it up, planting a gun, falsifying reports and making up witnesses. While none of the officers were convicted of murder, all were found guilty of violating human rights. Libyan rebels are reporting that Muammar Gaddafi's youngest son has been killed in a NATO airstrike. Hamiz Gaddafi was the commander of one of Libya's strongest brigades. NATO has not confirmed this, but officials say the target of the airstrike was an ammunition depot and military police. Police facility. There is a voluntary recall tonight of more than 135,000 Honda vehicles in Canada. Certain models of the Accord, CRV, and the Element are included in this recall. The company needs to update the software that controls the automatic transmission. Without that software update, parts of the transmission can be damaged if it is quickly shifted. Well, what would you be willing to give up for your cell phone? One out of three surveys said they would rather give up sex than live without their smartphones. A study by a U.S.-based phone company also found 20% of smartphone users would rather give up their significant others for weeks. And 40% said they would sooner stop brushing their teeth than lose their smartphone. Stay tuned. Later tonight, why NASA is sending this unmanned rocket on a five-year trip to Jupiter. Also, what is causing this lava light show at one of Hawaii's most famous volcanoes? I'm Adam Cook with CTV Sports. Coming up later in Finish the Play, an American Greco-Roman wrestler gets creative at the Junior World Championships, but what did he do? A, go for the headlock. B, scoot move between his opponent's legs. Or C, go airborne. The answer coming up later in sports. This portion of CTV News brought to you by the Government of Alberta. Is today's air quality okay for you? Know the numbers. When you have a lot to do, you don't have to do it alone. Together, let's get it done. As soon as you walk in the door, we'll ask, what project are you working on today? And get you help from a qualified associate. With their experience and know-how, our associates answer your questions and help find what you need. And their advice can give you the confidence to take on more projects. We're doing more for our customers, so let's get it done. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. The spirit of freedom is alive and well in Alberta. So, why lock into a long-term electricity plant? Seriously, why? With Easy Max, you're never locked in. You're free to cancel with a month's notice. You get the security of a guaranteed electricity rate. And you're even free to switch between rates. Plus, you get up to $100 credit every year for combining your electricity and gas. Call now and take charge. When thunderstorms intensify, when wind turns deadly, or when a child has been abducted, remember this. The new Alberta Emergency Alert. Stop. Listen. Respond. It can save lives. Every idea we have begins with you. The way you connect. How you browse, how you share,
and how you interact with the world around you. Down to the last detail, you inspire everything. Because in the end, innovation doesn't really matter unless it does something that really matters to you. The HTC Desire HD, available at Best Buy. Dr. Moose's team at Serene Radiance Medical Spa offer you the Emax Laser. Save for all skin colors. Remove unwanted hair. Experience skin rejuvenation. SereneRadiance.com. Recapping our top stories tonight, police are warning Edmontonians about 17-year-old Kira Peterson, who they claim is HIV positive and having unprotected sex. They're asking for the public's help in locating her. And a new twist in the downtown arena debate, the Cades Group has released a statement saying they are open to alternatives to find another long-term home for the Oilers in the Edmonton region. Enoch has been floated as a potential spot. Stay in the region on the yep. noon hour news today. We had some people on from Prairie Gardens and they said the harvest is on because of all the rain and then the heat, the rain, yep. the heat cycle. So things yep. are growing like crazy and around the farmers here. farmers would like to get some hang done. That's they right. could use a couple mm -hmm. dry days. Unfortunately, you're going to see some showers and thunderstorms tonight and then scattered showers as we head through the weekend as well. Early next week looks a little drier for you to get out in the fields. Beautiful uh, evening tonight. Uh, folks down at the Eskimos game, yeah, spectacular weather uh, as well. Is it even here? Is it here or is it in Winnipeg? No, there you go. Uh, it's in Winnipeg. Not, not bad weather there as well. Folk Fest as well. Uh, beautiful right through the early evening hours late this evening after 9 p.m. Could see some showers and thunderstorms. 25 degrees downtown, 23 in Red Deer. It's 18 in Grand Prairie, 26 in Fort McMurray. There's your severe thunderstorm watch from northwest all the way to the southeast. This does include the Edmonton area and surrounding regions. Severe thunderstorm warning for areas off to the southeast of Coronation, Hannah, and east. These storms mainly right now are centered around New Brigden and quickly moving off to the east. They are dropping hail and some heavy downpours. These are a lot weaker, these cells that you're seeing just off to the south of Rocky Mountain House as well, to the south of the Edson region and back up through northwestern parts of the province. We've had this stationary thunderstorm cell just off to the west-southwest of Swan Hills. That has produced some very heavy rain. Could be seeing 50 or 60 millimeters already in that area, so it just doesn't want to move. Here's your upper level low. This will eventually start to move off to the east, and so that's what's going to give us the instability and also draw in some slightly cooler air in the mid and upper levels, and that will get played out down at the surface with uh, low 20s in the forecast for tomorrow as well as Sunday. There are your showers and thunderstorms continuing across northwestern Alberta. It's a risk for us here in the Edmonton area. It's no guarantee, uh, but a good chance late this evening and into the overnight period that we'll see those showers and thunderstorms move through. Possibility for in some areas some heavy downpours and maybe some hail, so that's why the severe thunderstorm watch is in place. The heaviest of the rainfall and certainly the bulk of these showers and thunderstorms, though, will stay well to the north and northwest of us, Slave Lake back into Grand Prairie, and then as we get into the late stages of the day tomorrow across northeastern parts of the province. I actually think we'll see some sunny breaks here tomorrow afternoon in the Edmonton region. Slight risk again tomorrow night into Sunday morning to see a scattered brief shower, and then again midday Sunday could see a brief shower move through. But much of tomorrow, especially the latter half of the day and much of Sunday, should actually be fairly dry. 12 degrees in Fort McMurray overnight tonight. 10 in Red Deer, Grand Prairie. You'll get down to about 8 by early tomorrow morning. Daytime high tomorrow across the no northwest will be in the high teens in many areas. Jasper a little warmer at 21. Showers and thunderstorms in the forecast for Grand Prairie, possibly into the Peace River region. 24 and partly cloudy and high level. There's your heavy rainfall and the thunderstorms across northeastern areas late tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow evening. East central Alberta around 20, 22 in Calgary, close to 30 across much of the south. Right near considerably cooler and so is the capital region. 20s and 21s for daytime highs. So 25 yesterday, 26 for a daytime high. Today we'll slip back to around 20 for tomorrow and Sunday. So a 60% chance of showers and thunderstorms late this evening and through the overnight period right into tomorrow morning. By mid to late morning, this should all taper off and move out of the Edmonton area. Sunny breaks, a little breezy and a high of 21 tomorrow afternoon and then Sunday 20 with the chance of scattered showers. Sunshine and 23 Monday. Tuesday looking at a high of 25, 24 on Wednesday. And temperatures actually look like they'll stay in the low to mid 20s all of next week. So those people attending the Folk Fest today, 
Got some great weather and perhaps those showers, you said later on tonight? Yeah, they be at okay 9 o'clock at the absolute okay. earliest and maybe not even until 11 midnight wow. tonight. So uh, we'll keep you updated, uh, of course, throughout the rest of the evening. I know the folks down there, a lot of them yes. checking Twitter. So we'll That's be right. tweeting uh, updates mm -hmm. on that. And yeah, the weather is good for people at the Eskimos game in Winnipeg as well. Oh, okay. That's great. It's a beautiful I'm glad day. You check that out there. as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Well. Uh, we have an update tonight on one of our top stories. Thanks to Ruth, a CTV viewer. She just sent us some new pictures of that car that drove into Kingsway Mall. Callers tell us the car drove through the doors leading to the food court and the mall. Edmonton Fire Rescue and police are now on scene, but we still don't know at this time whether or not anyone was hurt. Witnesses claim the woman behind the wheel of the car drove through the parking lot, over a tree, and into the front of the building. Do stay with CTV News. We'll bring you updates as we get them. A volcano in Hawaii is putting on a beautiful natural light show. Rivers of red hot lava are streaming out of Kilauea, Hawaii's most famous volcano. One of the crater floors is deflating, which makes for this brilliant display. The volcano has been continuously active for nearly three decades now. The lava is actually contained within Hawaii's Volcanoes National Park, so it does not pose any risk to residents there. Stay tuned. Later tonight, a tiny wallaby is given a new lease on life in Hungary. CTV, making a difference. CTV's proud to support the Ride, Walk and Run for Celiacs. Come out for the 5K or 10K Walk, Ride or Run, August 14th. That'll take place at the South Amphitheater, the Alberta Legislature Grounds. Enjoy gluten-free food and entertainment. Proceeds support the Edmonton chapter of the Canadian Celiac Association. For registration details, go to ctvedmonton.ca. Making a difference. CTV Edmonton, committed to the community and you. <laughs> uh, Coors Light vented cold case, how does that work? Like this. The new vented cold case from the Coors Light Brewing Company. With vents that let the cold air in. It's working. <laughs> Canada. With millions of square kilometers of outdoors, you need some serious gear. Head to Cabela's Grand Opening in Edmonton. Our first store in Alberta. Featuring a legendary selection of outdoor gear. It's all field tested. Field proven. You can trust our gear. Meet industry pros and enter for a chance to win great giveaways. Celebrate Alberta's great outdoors. Come see for yourself. Cabela's, world's foremost outfitter. There are easier ways to stay cool for only a dollar. Dollar drink days are back at McDonald's. Enjoy any size soft drink or iced coffee for only a dollar plus tax all summer long. Want a rewards credit card with rebates on the annual fee year after year after year? RBC's got it. Switch to an RBC all-inclusive banking package and get up to $300 in gift cards. Visit rbc.com, get even more. Want access to every penny in your bank account with absolutely no minimum balance requirements? RBC's got it. Switch to an RBC all-inclusive banking package and get up to $300 in gift cards. Visit rbc.com, get even more. It's the most wonderful time of year. I like Staples. They talk the talk and they dance the dance. Okay, let's try this. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Staples. That was easy. The body of a 14-year-old boy who drowned west of Grand Prairie nearly two weeks ago has been found. The victim, who hasn't been named, was spotted yesterday by an aerial search near Red Willow Falls. He drowned while swimming with friends on July the 24th. If you plan to use the LRT this weekend, there are a few changes you should be aware of. The city is closing the platform of the Coliseum LRT station for refinishing starting tonight at 7 o'clock and then ending late Sunday evening. Trains will run at normal times but will not 
stop at the Coliseum station. Bus replacement service will run between the Belvedere and Stadium stations throughout the weekend. And you can find more information about these changes on our website. The U.S. Department of Transportation has slapped Air Canada with a $50,000 fine. The department says the airline violated advertising rules. It's over some online ads earlier this year that didn't disclose taxes and other fees on fares. Air Canada says it modified the ads within 24 hours of being notified that it broke the rules. Well, thousands of fans of Japanese animation are taking over parts of downtown this weekend. Animathon 18 kicked off today at the downtown Grant McHugh and campus. Thousands are expected to attend the weekend-long event. Organizers say anime has a wide appeal. It covers fantasy, sci-fi, romance, drama. It has a little bit of everything for everybody. And it's not just for kids either, which is awesome. Organizers expect about 5,000 people tomorrow alone. Information on Animathon can be found on our website. Well, here is a story that restores your faith in humanity. A New Hampshire woman says a man stole her wallet and GPS and then returned it with an apology note and $10. Police say the man walked into a grocery store and swiped the items right out of her purse. He clearly felt sorry for what he'd done and actually used the GPS to find her home address. He then showed up at her front door with the items and an apology note and an extra $10 for her troubles. Police say despite returning the items, he may still face a number of charges. The Discovery Wildlife Park north of Innisfail is welcoming a tiny new addition to their family. This baby Japanese snow macaque is just under two weeks old. He was born on July the 25th. Zookeepers have named the new baby Sachimo for now. The tiny animal is staying pretty close to mom, but zookeepers say once he gets a little older, he will be one of the heads of the family. He is son to our dominant female, Sunny, so he's pretty high ranking in the troop. And of course he has a little, I guess it would be his cousin, who is Clover, who was born on St. Patrick's Day, who no longer is the baby in the troop, so he's now the big boy running around because there's a new baby. In the Japanese wilderness, snow macaques are the northernmost living of all non-human primates. It's the Rick's 40th Birthday Bash. This weekend only, get 15% off all Samsung and LG appliances. No exceptions. This Samsung 90 cubic foot fridge is only $8.99. This LG lawn repair is only $11.89. The Rick's 40th Birthday Bash. My favorite thing is... Espanol. Hockey. French. Francais. Academies. Teacher. Recess. Pencil crayons. My students. There's a horse for everyone. Find yours Wednesdays, Fridays, and weekends. The Horses at Northlands Park. On Thursday, August 11th, Dairy Queen's most magical treat will become even more magical because all proceeds from every blizzard you buy help children in your Children's Miracle Network Member Hospital. I need you to pay attention to this thing of beauty. I also need you to look at this beer. It's Boxer Lager, and it's the highest quality beer at the lowest possible price. Look at it. I meant the beer. Boxer Lager is created with Western Canadian two-row malt and did I mention it's at the lowest possible price? High quality, low price. Now that's a thing of beauty. Boxer Lager, beer of champions. Also available in light. Tonight, 
an airport endurance test. Yeah, that is crazy, isn't it? The very long layover they're all trying to win. I don't think you can get bored in an airport. One contestant gets to check in. Tonight on CTV National News. Whatever you're craving, River Cree Resort and Casino will satisfy you. Fine dining at Sage, daily theme buffets at the Kitchen Bistro, and the MVP of Sports Lounges, Tap 25. Clothing for the CTV News team provided by Dirks. Tailored to your needs. Dirks, it's your season. Adam's here now for a look at sports, and boy, oh boy, it should be a great football game in Winnipeg tonight. Yeah. Two best teams going at it. That's right. I mean, it's the number one offense owned by the Edmonton Eskimos up against the number one defense owned by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Pretty amazing. I don't think anybody expected that these two teams would be uh, this good at this point of the season. We call it the CFL sanitized version of shock and awe. The undefeated Eskimos are already two victories away from equaling their win total from last year, while the 4-1 Bombers finished last season at 4-14. and Nobody expected this kind of matchup in week six. Already loud here, second down 10, Ray with time, looking deep for Jason Barnes who has it. First drive of the game, Ricky Ray goes on a tear with Jason Barnes. Ray went to Barnes three straight times in the air, including this pass for a touchdown. Eskimos on the board early on, seven zip, green and gold. Here come the Bombers though, Buck Pierce picked off by Rod Davis. That's his fourth interception of the season already. And Edmonton gets the ball right back. Later, the often injured Pierce gets roughed up by an exercise bike. An awkward wreck on the sidelines, and he collides with the stationary bike. More bad luck for Buck. That looked pretty nasty, actually. Yeah, Winnipeg kicker Justin Pilardi also having a rough first half. After missing from 22, he goes wide from 32 yards out. Edmonton leading 11 of 5 in the first half. If the Eskies win tonight, they will be 6-0 to start the season, which has not happened since 1961. And the to hockey now, they make up the only brother tandem in attendance for the World Junior Summer Development Camp. The Hamilton boys, Dougie and Freddie, have a very good chance of making the cut come December, which would make them the first set of brothers to suit up for Canada at the World Juniors Tournament in three decades. That's our goal. We've, we've always talked about it since we were younger, watching the World Juniors, and uh, we've always wanted to go out there together and, and play for the team, and now that's closer, it's starting to get exciting. At the end of the day, we have to go home, and our parents have to be happy with us, so uh, we need dinner, so we can't, can't make them upset. Both have been, have been drafted by NHL teams over the last two years, and both play for Niagara and the OHL. They're also brainiacs in the classroom. They're class acts. They do, you know, 100% in school and you know, great hockey players on the ice, great people off the ice, and you know, I think they bring a lot of positive attributes to the dressing room. And the Hamilton brothers will be playing against each other again tomorrow in the uh, Saturday night scrimmage at Rexall Place. That will start at 7 o'clock. Don't plan on using the LRT. There are no stops at Rexall. They're doing some work on the station platform. Well, New York Rangers forward Sean Avery was arrested at his home early this morning in California for battery on a police officer. He was jailed for seven hours before being released on $20,000 bail. Reports say Avery was having a party at his home when noise complaints from neighbors twice brought out police to the location at and they investigated on the second visit Avery allegedly pushed an officer no comment from the Rangers this time and the NHL says it is investigating the matter all right to golf now second round of the Bridgestone Invitational after missing three months because of leg injuries Tiger Woods made a solid return yesterday 268 not as good today started the day with four straight pars you would burn the lip on 14 that should have been a tweeter that led to uh, back to back bogeys he was uh, kind of all over the place today. He did make four birdies from the bunker now, though, the so-called sand save, and it is way long. Off the green, in fact, that would end up in a double bogey. Tiger won over 71 today. First-round leader Adam Scott needed eight more shots to get around the track. 62 yesterday, 70 today. The stylish young Ricky Fowler fired a sizzling 64. Best round of the day to grab a share of the lead. Phil Mickelson, pretty in pink. His approach and the par for 11th, and it's very nice. Jars it, lefty finds a cup, but he finished at three over today to the leaderboard. Scott, Bradley, Moore, and Fowler all tied for the lead at eight under. Other notables, uh, U.S. Open champ Rory McIlroy tied for 13th at four under. Woods is one under, and Mickelson is even par through two rounds. Well, it's been a golden week for a handful of local divers. 
Herb Flewelling of the Edmonton Dive Club is one happy coach. Half of his team captured gold medals at a junior international diving competition in Rome this week. Becky Deacon took gold in the girls' one meter yesterday, while Taya Siskakis earned top spot in the three meter. On the boys' side, Edmonton's Jack Tronowski won gold in the three meter springboard, and Tyler Henschel won the 16 to 18 year old tower dive. It just shows that uh, all of our curriculum and our coaches' uh, uh, training that we do and, the, and, you know, all the equipment we have and everything, the program, it's everything. It's not just any one thing. In total, Canada wrapped up the three-day meet with 16 trips to the podium. We usually do that well, but Canada's very strong. If you're number one or two in the country, you may be one or two in the whole, you know, world for that matter. All right, time now to check out our finish the play. Our Roman Greco wrestler from the USA got very creative at the Junior World Championships. Ellis Coleman on the mat. What did he do? A, did he go for the headlock? B, scoop between his opponent's leg? Or C, go airborne? Let's find out. That is awesome. The move is called the flying squirrel. And with good reason, Ellis Coleman nailed it. He ended up winning the bronze in the event. That is that quite a move. Neat, yeah. yeah, just to take a moment and give a shout out to our local divers. Yeah, if they ever do a fantastic That's job. That's amazing, and you and you know you wonder going in. We've got a year away from the Olympics now. Wow. I mean, should these kids be some young talent being yeah. groomed? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. 12-11 for Winnipeg is the score Whoa. in the football game right now. Just got an update. We're back with more in a minute. See our city story revealed in an amazing visual event. Only in the new Capitol Theater at Fort Edmonton Park. Open now, show free with daily admission. It's the most wonderful time of year. I like Staples. They talk the talk and they dance the dance. Okay, let's try this. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Check out our huge selection of back-to-school supplies for less than a loony. Staples. That was easy. On Thursday, August 11th, Dairy Queen's most magical treat will become even more magical because all proceeds from every blizzard you buy help children in your Children's Miracle Network member hospital. Reduces the visible signs of aging. Minimizes the look of wrinkles. Hydrates. Renews. Seems like an amazing moisturizer. Actually, it's an amazing makeup. Introducing Revlon Age Defined with DN Advantage. Its powerful anti-aging skincare ingredients actually make skin look younger. 96% of women saw flawless, younger-looking skin in just two weeks. New Revlon Age Defying with DN Advantage Cream Makeup. Age Defy It. Every idea we have begins with you. The way you connect. How you browse. How you share. And how you interact with the world around you. Down to the last detail, you inspire everything. Because in the end, innovation doesn't really matter unless it does something that really matters to you. The HTC Desire HD, available at Future Shop. We are Albertans. It's not only pride in our province, but also an understanding of the people that live here. Our neighbors, our solutions, our police. We explore and show you the stories that affect our cities, our food, our nature. We are more than a news program. Our Alberta. Alberta Primetime, weeknights at 7 on Access. This portion of CTV News brought to you by Lotto 649. Next jackpot and estimated 3.5 million. Last night on CTV News, we told you that NASA scientists discovered water on Mars, and that has many people excited about the potential of new life on the red planet. Tonight, ABC's Neil Karlinski goes exploring. For a lot of people, until there's a bona fide alien walking around on camera, you know, like the kind in the movie Aliens, they won't believe there could be life on Mars. 
But listen to this. Scientists believe there's a real chance of something alive out there after discovering these dark areas, what they believe to be flowing water on Mars. Not ice or microscopic drops, actual water you could fill a cup with. We have found repeated and predictable evidence suggesting water flowing on Mars. Since 2006, the NASA Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter has been taking a really close look at the red planet. Just look how close they zoomed in. And after photographing the same area year after year, they noticed these shady areas showing up in summer and vanishing in winter. Scientists say this could be a very big deal. It makes you wonder what else there is to discover on Mars that we haven't noticed yet. There's no way to be 100% sure it's water yet, but if they're right, don't expect Martians, but microscopic life might just be there. Neil Karlinski, ABC News. An unmanned rocket named Juno has begun a five-year journey to Jupiter. One. Ignition and liftoff. Of the the solar-powered Explorer blasted off from Cape Canaveral earlier today. Scientists are hoping to discover the recipe for making planets by identifying Jupiter's secret We're ingredients. Seven. The gas giant is believed to be the solar system's oldest planet. And take a look at this little guy. This is Frodo, a baby wallaby who has a new lease on life after falling out of his mother's pouch. Now, under normal circumstances, this would mean certain death since the little ones are simply too weak to get back into the pouch and their mothers are unable to help. But thanks to three zookeepers in Hungary working around the clock, Frodo gained weight on a steady diet of goat's milk. Hey, Wendy, it doesn't get better than the Baconator. Not so fast. Our new Cheddar Baconator has naturally aged cheddar, a savory steakhouse sauce, and six thick cut strips of crispy bacon. Try it, because you know when it's real. At Wendy's, we start with a whole potato. Then we slice it, sprinkle it with sea salt, and serve it hot and crispy for a taste that's as real as it gets. Wendy's fries with sea salt. You know when it's real. Oh, hot dog and fun. A big welcome to all of our competitors, including the legendary Kobayashi. Like to win quick? Play blackjack and you could win up to $21,000. Just scratch and win. Throughout the whole time, too. <laughs> it's gonna be the best. You don't know where that's been, dude. <laughs> I believe you got something that's mine all this time. So to see you a small car with style, safety, and best-in-class fuel economy. It really is the end of Too Good to Be True. The all-new Accent from Hyundai. Every idea we have begins with you. The way you connect. How you browse. How you share. And how you interact with the world around you. Down to the last detail, you inspire everything. Because in the end, innovation doesn't really matter, unless it does something that really matters to you. The HTC Desire HD, available at Best Buy. See if you can spot the difference between an oil change from Mr. Lube and one done at a dealership. They both use premium brand oil, both use trained technicians, and both work to warranty approved standards. Ready? difference is the car on the right has an appointment two weeks from now at 2.30 in the afternoon. Ready for a change? Women's clothing for the CTV News team provided by Southgate. This summer, shimmer boldly at Southgate. Recapping one of the day's top stories, there is a big mess to clean up at the front doors leading to the food court at Kingsway Mall. A woman behind the wheel of a car plowed through the doors a little more than an hour ago. 
a female driver lost control of her vehicle and did enter through our main west entrance here at, King's, at Kingsway. The driver is okay, did not sustain injuries. There was a bystander who has received minor injuries and has been taken to the hospital on precautionary measures. No, else, no one else inside was hurt and it's not known exactly what caused that crash. It's expected crews will begin repairing the entrance shortly. We will have an update on this story tonight on CTV Late Night News with Kim Taylor. Okay, you were talking about uh, golf ball-sized hail in Calgary and right now? And some localized Whoa. flooding. Take a look at the uh, watches and warnings. Everybody in yellow under a severe thunderstorm watch. No severe thunderstorms in those areas. The areas in orange and red, those are severe thunderstorm warnings. That storm cell in Calgary producing uh, reports of golf ball-sized hail, especially it looks like on the north and east sides of Calgary. As well as some localized flooding just south of Rocky Mountain House, some pretty good storms, and southeast of Coronation as well. Some severe thunderstorms. A line of storms now just off to the east and southeast of Edson, slowly inching its way off to the northeast. Looks like we're good for a couple of hours here in the Edmonton area, probably not seeing anything until 9 p.m. at the earliest. And no guarantee on this, but it does look likely that we'll see some showers and thunderstorms late this evening, overnight tonight, and into tomorrow morning. I think by mid to late morning, showers should come to an end. Sunny breaks, a little breezy in 21 tomorrow afternoon. 20 on Sunday, there's a slight chance of a couple raindrops overnight Saturday night, early Sunday morning, and then Sunday midday could see a few scattered showers. <coughs> Most of Sunday does look dry. By Monday, back to sunshine mm -hmm. and 23. Okay, one final update on our football game. Yeah, Eskimos back in front, 14 to 12. Ooh. So they get a field goal. So it looks like this is going to be a good one. A in great Winnipeg. one tonight. Yeah. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a fabulous evening and weekend, and we'll see you on Monday. See you.